Welcome back everyone. It's Michael, your host here at Quarantine Cuisine for episode number four, which means we're four days in self-isolation. Uh, so far, so good, no symptoms, so we hope it stays, which is just great. Uh, so tonight we have a very special meal, so a very traditional Roman dish. We're gonna make pasta a la carbon carbonara, which uh, really is a, we're gonna make pasta from scratch. Uh, we're gonna put some pancetta, which is a cured pork belly, salt cured pork belly. Uh, and in that, we're gonna have a uh, cheese and egg mixture that makes it nice and creamy. Uh, so we're gonna, that's kind of the main uh, dish for tonight. And we're gonna serve that with a blanched rapini, which is a broccoli rabe, is uh, another word for it. But we're gonna do a, uh, a, a blanched uh, uh, rapini with some garlic, uh, maybe some red pepper flakes in there as well, and some zest of lemon just to uh, give it a, a little bit more flavor to it as well. So that's the dish for tonight. We're gonna do pasta from scratch, so we're gonna walk you through step-by-step step how we do that. So let's get started. Okay, so first we're gonna start with our pasta. So I've already um, separated six egg yolks in this uh, bowl right here. I'm gonna add two more eggs. So that'll be six egg yolks and then two whole eggs into the bowl. These are large eggs. Um, and then I'm going to add um, about a tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm just gonna whisk that together very vigorously. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna create, uh, just in the center of the uh, pasta board here, or pastry board actually it's called. I'm gonna create, uh, there's about two cups of all-purpose flour here. Uh, ideally, considering circumstances, we would use semolina oil flour or we'd use double O, double zero flour, but uh, given the circumstances we're in, we only had all purpose flour, so we're going to start with that. So, uh, basically, just going to create a little bit of a, I'm going to actually add some salt in it. So, a little pinch of, uh, of kosher salt just around the, uh, around the flour here. And then I'm going to create a little well in the middle. And I'm gonna add our egg mixture to the middle of that. A little bit at a time. And just for the fork, I'm gonna work it in here a bit. Just mix the flour slowly in with the egg mixture here. Working towards here is really just trying to get as much of the dry and the and the egg mixture and the flour and the egg mixture kind of work together here. A bit of a science in terms of the weights and the amounts that you use, but uh, I do have a little bit of uh, flour off to the side here if I do need to use it. So that's about as mixed as I can get it. So I'm just going to bring everything together with my hands now. It's still quite wet, so I'm gonna add a little more flour inside here. I'm gonna get everything into somewhat of a, of a ball. Ah, it's coming together really nicely now. Get all these bits inside here. And as you can see, it's starting to form and take some shape now. So, Add a little more flour, it just seems to be a little bit of a wet, uh, a little bit wet still. It's funny, as I grew up, my uh, my grandmother on my mother's side, maternal grandmother, you'd always ask her, you know, how do you know when it's ready? And she'd say, well, it just feels right. So that was always her very scientific way of, um, of getting recipes together. So anyways, this looks like it's coming together. It's uh, It's got a good texture to it. I'm just gonna knead this now for five or 10 minutes. I'm gonna keep adding a little, just a little more flour inside it because it just seems just a little bit wet. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape. We've got a nice ball here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna wrap that up in some plastic wrap. We're gonna let that set and just rest at room temperature for about 20 minutes while we get on to our other prep. So, so far the pasta dough is made, and next we're going to move to shaping our pasta and rolling it out and getting the type of pasta that we want for the meal tonight. 
Okay, so our pasta dough has been resting here in the, uh, the plastic wrap, so I'm gonna uncover it, uh, remove the plastic wrap. And on the pastry board, I'm gonna put plenty of flour just to make sure it's dusted very nicely. Coat the, uh, coat the pasta a bit. And then I'm just gonna cut this into some portion sizes just to be able to roll it out. So, you know, I've got, for the amount here, I'm gonna cut this into threes. So that's three like this. So I'm gonna set aside, let me a little more on this one here. I'm gonna set the two aside right now and focus on this one here. So essentially what I wanna do here is I just really wanna roll this out before I put this into the pasta machine. So I'm gonna roll each of the three out here just to get it started because uh, you can't put a big chunk of uh, pasta dough in the pasta machine, but so all I wanna do is just get it about that size right there. I'm gonna set that aside, do the same thing with the, the other two as well, so. Okay, so everything's nice and rolled out now. Now it's time to go to the pasta machine. Okay, so here's our uh, pasta machine. It's uh, a manual hand-operated crank uh, machine here. It really has two parts to the machine. First is the rollers here, and this is all adjustable. We're gonna start at a very thick uh, kind of pasta size, and we'll move it gradually down to thin until we get to something we want. And then on this side over here, we just basically move the machine over, and we have two sizes, so more of a spaghettini here. This one is a little more like a fettuccine, so we have two sizes of, uh, of uh, pasta that we can actually make here in the machine. So really simply, um, I make sure there's some flour on, uh, on the pasta dough, and I'm gonna put it at its highest or thickest setting right now, and essentially just crank it through, crank it through, crank it through, crank it through, and as you can see, the pasta comes out like this. Then we're gonna set the adjustment down one lower. We'll crank it through again. And as you can see, as each time we crank it through, it gets thinner, but it also gets longer. Keep her going. And if you have enough flour on it, it's not gonna stick, so uh, when you fold it over, so. So we're getting to a nice kind of thickness right now. I think that's gonna be really great for the pasta. I think we're good right there, actually. So rather than try to put the long, long piece through, I'm just gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna relocate my crank to more of a fettuccine kind of size of the pasta. And essentially just we'll put it between the pieces here. And as we go through here, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see some great pasta come out the other end here. Beautifully cut. We'll just put that in a little bit of a piece right there. And we'll do the same thing with the next piece that I cut put it through the cutter, receive it on the other end. And what we have, we have a couple more here. We're gonna let these set aside. So I'm gonna go ahead, I showed you how we did this with one length, I've got two more to go. So essentially, the pasta comes in, we roll it thin, we put it through the cutter the size we want, we'll leave it off the side the way it is right now. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour in this so they don't stick. Uh, in a couple of minutes. So that's it. I'm gonna work on the other two, but that basically gets us to where we want to at this step of the process. So as you can see now, we have the six beautiful nests of pasta. I put a little bit of flour on them so they don't get um, all sticky and uh, mixed up together. Uh, so this is amazing. So not overly complicated. The machinery certainly helps, but the recipe is actually very straightforward. So now we're gonna begin with the rest of our prep for our dinner before we get to the oven or get to the stove top and uh, start cooking everything. So our vegetable prep tonight is actually very straightforward. So um, 
We have this uh, rapini or broccoli rabe as it's called. It's a bitter green. Uh, and Dorothy was kind enough in addition to her responsibilities as executive producer of the series, camera operator, sous chef, uh, prep cook, moral supporter, uh, lovely wife, uh, was able to um, uh, actually prep this, take the thick stalks off. So that's essentially the way you prepare it. Uh, and we're going to uh, blanch these uh, in a minute and then um, we're going to actually put them on ice and what the ice does is it tends to retain the color, the brilliant green of the broccoli rabe uh, before we actually then finish it uh, in a pan with some olive oil, uh, some uh, red chili pepper flakes, garlic and a little bit of lemon. So that's the uh, broccoli rabe, pretty straightforward. The only other ingredient we have from a vegetable standpoint is garlic. Yes, lots of garlic. So um, I'm just going to basically slice these garlic pieces up. We're going to use them in very thin slices tonight. Not really minced, just a really, really thin, thin slice of garlic, which should be good. Anyways, there you have it. That's the vegetable prep for tonight. It was that straightforward. Okay, the only last prep we need to do is, uh, is dice up our pancetta. So as I mentioned earlier, pancetta is a pork belly that's salt cured. It's uh, known very much in uh, Italian cooking. So essentially all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice this up. It's already pretty thin actually, so I'm gonna make a number of slices here. Probably do, I don't know, two thirds of this, maybe half of this. We'll see how much we can come up with here. Beautiful. It's already salt cured, so you can actually eat it the way it is, although it is a little bit tough. Uh, you fry it up very nice, make it crispy, add this to meals. Um, you know, you can also use um, bacon if you're in a pinch, so any kind of uh, salt cured bacon will work as well. Uh, we are very lucky tonight. We got a food order in from a supplier, actually a very an independent grocer here that I do want to uh, uh, give a call out to, a shout out to, and that is, uh, it's called the Apple Market uh, here in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Uh, they were amazing. I called an order in for some food today and they literally had curbside pickup. So uh, the car went, uh, the, the trunk lid opened, they put the groceries in, paid by credit card. Uh, and these foot soldiers here, people that are on the front lines making sure that we all have food, are doing an amazing job. So a big shout out to, um, the Apple Market in Mississauga, uh, small independent grocer doing great things for the community just to keep us supplied and fed. Okay, I think we're looking pretty good for the amount of pancetta. Um, well, I'll just finish chopping this last slice up here. And I think that's probably about all the prep we need uh, before we start uh, cooking. We're all set. Okay, now we're ready to prepare our um, Rapini, broccoli arabe. So I have a hot pot here. The rapini's already been blanched and put on ice and dried off because when you put it in oil, it's gonna splatter like crazy. So we try to dry it a bit. So uh, put some olive oil in the bottom of a pan. And then we're gonna add our garlic to the bottom of that. Not for very long, because garlic tends to um, it tends to uh, pour out pretty quickly. So we're uh, just trying to get ourselves a little bit of a spoon sorted out here. Okay, good. Now we're gonna toss our broccoli in. Bottom of the pan here, mix that around. Can add some salt. Add a little bit of pepper as well in the bottom. And here we go. We had a little more smoke in the kitchen again, so uh, that's just the way it goes. We're going to add a little bit of red chili pepper here with red chili flakes. Just put a little bit of heat in it, not too much, just a little bit of heat to. Okay, that's all cooked up very nicely. I'm going to shut the heat off. We're going to cover it up now, and we're going to let that sit for the next little while. So we have a reasonably hot pan here, and I'm actually just gonna put the pancetta right inside here. We're gonna render that down a bit. So Kevin has agreed to be on nest uh, suppression control here with the broom to be able to put the nest uh, 
smoke detector off. If it goes off again, but I think we should be okay. See there? Now, the one part of the carbonara, which is important, is uh, an egg and cheese mixture. So I'm just going to do this right over here. So two eggs, two large eggs. I'm going to whisk those up very nicely. Then I'm going to add about a cup of Reggiano Parmesan cheese. I'm going to mix that up as well. That's about a good helping here, a good helping almost a cup full of cheese here with the two eggs. Okay, the smoke alarm is over. That's actually a really good thing, I tell you. No chef wants uh, smoke in their kitchen because that will kind of drive the guests away. But anyways, we are here at home having some fun time during our quarantine cuisine series that we have. Okay, so this is kind of really nice and mixed up. So we're gonna leave this uh, just off to the side until it's ready to add into the pasta. Now we're just waiting the, for the pasta to come back up the boil. I'm just gonna zoom out here just a little bit just to be able to see what's going on. We got a few things going on here. So pancetta is still rendering down nice, not on a really high heat, just kind of a low to medium heat. The pasta, as you can see, is coming along very nicely. Looks really good, actually. Coming up the boil. This will not be long at all. Great, so we're going to uh, get the pasta off. Looks amazing. We're going to throw that right into the pancetta mixture here. Make sure we've got three great portions of pasta here. We tend to uh, cook just enough pasta in the family here. Actually, just enough pasta for about three days every time we eat pasta, but that's okay. more inside here, turn up the heat, get the pancetta mixed in very nicely. Okay, I think we're good there. I think we've got enough pasta here. Okay, maybe just a little more. Okay, maybe just a few more and that's it. Okay, good, we're done. Okay, good. Okay, so we're gonna turn up the heat here nice. Get the pancetta mixed in with the pasta. I don't think we need that fan anymore, so I think we're covered. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid in here from the pasta. That actually helps thicken it a little bit. The sauce. Okay, I'm going to shut this, the flame off now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit just for a minute. Get all our pancetta mixed in there nicely. Looks yummy. If you can smell it, it actually smells really, really good. Okay, now I'm going to take our egg and cheese mixture. I'm just going to blend it in very nicely. Spoon that around nice, whisk it around. We don't want scrambled eggs, we just want to be able to mix this in, that's why the flame is off. With the flame off, the egg will cook nicely but it won't scramble on us. With the cheese mixture in there as well.
looks absolutely amazing. Creamy, you get the creaminess of the egg, you get the creaminess of the cheese in here, you get the saltiness and the flavor of the pancetta, the great kind of egg noodle that we made from scratch. So uh, I think we're just about ready to go. So the flame is off and I think we're ready to go to the plate. Okay, wine pairing for tonight. So uh, actually I left that duty up to our son Kevin. Uh, he's become quite the wine aficionado. So tonight he selected a 2014 Barolo. It's by uh, Fratelli Sereo and uh, Battista Borgogno. It's, uh, this particular wine has some interesting notes uh, that he researched. So it uh, is a little higher in acidity, which is perfect for this meal because it'll break through the creaminess of the Cabernetta. It uh, has some light fruit flavors to it, some notes of tobacco and tar, etc. So really looking forward to opening this, this wine up and enjoying it. So that's the wine pairing for tonight. We're going to get on to prepare the rest of the meal so we can get to the plate and uh, enjoy our dinner. Okay, our pasta a la carbonara is done, our rapini is done, now we're going to plate. Now this is a very, very simple meal to plate, of course. So we want to make sure we mix it up so we have a good portion of both pasta and some pancetta inside here. So what I like to do is I like to just get a nice long piece here, turn it around. We need a little more pancetta in here, so we're going to toss a little bit more pancetta on top, which is great. I think that's a good serving size there. Um, now what we're going to do after that is we're going to grab a little bit of rapini, some black, broccoli rabe, put that on the side, very simple like that. Throw a little bit of uh, black pepper on top. I like adding pepper at the end because it tends to just add the flavor uh, separately than just blending it with the meal. And of course some more uh, parmesan cheese on top here. And then we got a perfect meal. Pasta a la carbonara with rapini as a side.